Hello, and welcome back to Prism and Company. My name is Colin, and on the docket today, I wanted to show off a little side project I've been working on. I have made a deck of 96 square cards based on Cabinets of Curiosity. Now, if you're not familiar with the Cabinet of Curiosity, it's essentially a cabinet, a drawer somewhere, an armoire, a display case, filled with weird stuff. Sometimes, sometimes it's macabre, sometimes it's theme, sometimes it's strange or different, but it's always you know jam-packed full of little things or bottles or vials or labels, and I just love all those little teeny tiny kinds of details. The difference here, though, is that I didn't hand draw these. I didn't, you know, collage them together. I used AI to generate the artwork. It's a program called Midjourney that I'm using, and it's really, really great. If you want to use AI to generate art, I highly recommend it. It's the best one I've found. You may know of AI generated artwork from the myriad tarot decks out there on Kickstarter or in, you know, the field that have been generated using AI or artificial intelligence. How this works, if you're not familiar, is that you go into the software and you give it some prompts, you type them in. So for this back here, I typed in cabinet of curiosity and doors closed. Those were the, the prompts that I gave it. And it generated a whole bunch of different options for me. And I was able to say, you know, re-roll the options. I want something new or give me some variations on this design. I like it, but I don't love it. And then finally, you know, I found the image that I liked. I said, up res it and make it a final quality image. Boom, I got it, put it on the card, printed. It's not super hard in my personal opinion. Um, you have to get a little creative with your keywords, but it's more just fun. It's cool to sort of put in the prompts and see what the software kicks out. Now, for a commercial product that you're selling, I have my own opinions about using AI art. They are not ultra positive. That's just me. Um, everybody can love what they love, but I don't think that there is enough specificity that you can give AI at this moment to just put in prompts, get some artwork, print it, sell it. I don't love that. Um, that's what I did here, but I'm not selling it. This is just a silly project for me and one that I wanted to show off because I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, the whole idea with this was making, like I said, cabinets of curiosity, and then I would give it an extra keyword. So cabinet of curiosity, x-ray for this one. And I generate, generate, generate until I got an x-ray image that I liked. And then I'd move on to the next. And basically, I'm not using this for divination or for an oracle deck or anything. It's just for inspiration. If I'm feeling stuck or want a little extra creative juice, I plan on pulling a card or two or setting some out around the house just so I can look at them, get inspired by all the nitty gritty details and go on from there. Um, let's go through and talk about how the AI generated these or some of the, the qualities that it has and maybe my thoughts about AI tarot decks along the way. <coughs> Cue the intro. The deck is chonky, 96 cards in total. Why 96, you ask? Because the place I get it printed from, the Game Crafter, prints in sets of 12. So I almost always align what I make to what they can print because it is cost effective. Uh, if it's a tarot deck or something, I'll of course make 78 cards. But for this, I'm like, I'm gonna max it out to a reasonable-ish number and go from there. Um, now, yeah, let's start from this side. Um, a lot of these prompts were given with a kind of a specific theme in mind. So like this one was just red, I believe. It's been a little while since I've generated them, so I don't remember all of them. But then as we go on, this was like lasers and smoke. And I have these roughly in rainbow order, and then there's some at the end that I was like, I don't really know where these go. Carnival on this one. Lines. I wanna say coral. And Hmm, I don't remember. There are some that are very obvious and some that I'm like, what the heck did I put in? Anyway, though, you can really see some things that are very consistent with these and some things that are wildly different. The fact that it's a cabinet with drawers and kind of some space, pretty darn consistent across the board. Now, it's not always very accurate. Sometimes it is. This is definitely like a space going back. There's this weird coral brain thing in a jar with extra things on the side. Same kind of deal here. There's two distinct cabinets with space going back. But sometimes this one, it looks good at a glance, 
but then you see these weird shadows or the corners don't quite line up. That is like AI to a T. Things that don't really quite work, that are patched together, that almost appear real, but it doesn't quite understand what it's doing, so it's just kind of guessing. And for a cabinet of curiosity, I think that's awesome. The fact that there's a bit of an optical illusion here, chef's kiss. I mean, it's so cool. It, I want those weird little details in there. The other thing you might notice is that we're not really looking at anything in particular. The carnival, for example, you know, if you know that it's a carnival, you can kind of tell that it's carnival themed, uh, like big tent drapery, but it's not like this is a clown nose and that's a tiger and that's a ringleader. All of the objects are going to seem very strange and wiry because a cabinet of curiosity as a source image has all this density of detail. It's going to take that stuff and combine it and conglomerate it into just junk and put it on, which I think is great for abstract, just inspiration purposes. I don't necessarily want to be looking at something. I just want to see what my mind puts together from all this stuff here. Let's, let's take a look at six more. Alrighty, I'll tell you about the prompts along the way. Here we had explosion, lava, and lava again, actually. There was some, I guess I should say, my original idea with the project was to make every single one like wildly different and as unique as possible. And I still did go for that as I was kind of picking from the images. But sometimes it would generate two things. I'm like, those are too cool. I've got to put them both in. This was... I actually put in a lot of keywords for this. This was elemental magic, lightning, fire, water, and ice, I think. Something like that. And it came up with this cool little bottle, like freezing rain thing. Oh, so cool. This was, what was that? Hmm, I don't exactly remember what that was. Or this one, actually. Some of them with really unique compositions, I kept in because they looked very different. Some of them felt a little more basic cabinet of curiosity, and I wanted a few of those in there too. I treated this whole thing, or I based it, I should say, off cabinets, of course. So to have some just quote unquote generic cabinets of curiosity, I'm in. I really love that. You'll see lots of little vials and bottles and collections of things, and it's wonderful to me. I think it's so inspiring. I just love the idea of getting into all these little details and, and picking them out. Did I have more to say on these? I did, but my brain is foggy, so we're gonna move on. Here we have hieroglyphics, tiger, crab, chess, butterfly, and blown glass. Um, butterfly is a theme you'll see come up a few times. There's another blown glass I know for sure. And I loved this crab. I put in orange crab, and I tell you what, it, I finally figured out how to do color orange, but until I did, it always put actual oranges, the fruit, with the thing. And for this crab, I mean, you can tell what it is. It's some kind of crustacean, but it's so weird and alien that I was like, yes, that is the kind of odd stuff that I want in a Cabinet of Curiosities deck. There's another blown glass. This was um, digital sound wave, I think, or waveform. Prisms. Butterflies again, a very different butterfly though. Dinosaurs. And orange vials. Now, as I went through, I generated over I think it was 500 cabinets and I narrowed it down to 96 and I would generate dozens and dozens of dinosaurs, for example, maybe not dozens, but maybe 10 and kind of see what they were. Actually, I probably generated a lot more than 500. I had 500 finalists and then I narrowed those down to 96. I did generate lots and lots of each one, um, which is kind of the fun part to see what the variations would be, how they would come up. And as I was picking them, I really wanted them to feel distinct. So for example, this one has four sort of components to it, where a lot of these have three. Um, this one had nine, this one was a little bit uneven. So I wanted the composition of each of these to feel a little bit different and fresh, um, and also really highlight their signature word. The fact that you can kind of tell if you know that these are dinosaurs, love it. The fact that this is digital sound waves, it feels very different and distinct. That's what I was going for. 
As I did this though, you can tell behind the scenes that this AI is only pulling from a certain set of images, even in the example of like, there's three, 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 you know, three columns in each of these, you can tell that there is something it's pulling from that is distinctly three in these cabinets of curiosity, whatever source images it has. Same deal here, nine in a grid, very clear cut, but the, the output feels kind of different. Now with these two though, it's subtle, but you can even see things like the center one is kind of orange. The top left one is kind of blue. The middle one is a little bit more pale. Um, the bottom left one is a little bit lighter. Uh, you know, there's blue green tones in here and it breaks down a little bit, but you can tell these are pulling from the same basic things and just trying to stitch together whatever it can, which is really, really cool. Alrighty, here we have Amber on fire, chess again, I believe, or maybe figurines, occult, I really like that one, optical illusion, and maze. I tried to color code these and a lot of the just general tan ones, I'm like, they're orange, it's fine, it'll be fine. There's a whole bunch more orange or tan ones at the end because I'm like, I don't feel good putting all these in the orange section. I'm working on it, work in progress. One thing I really liked about most of these were that they felt very small and contained. I only made a few exceptions. Like here, you can see an entire cabinet of curiosity, but it's also sort of contained within a larger thing. And the fact that the fire is hitting the walls, it, it looked too cool, I, I couldn't pass it up. And this is one of them that really looks like something. I mean, obviously that's a person's face wearing goggles and they're in this sort of strange space but it sort of looks like maybe a mannequin head that these goggles are mounted on and there's still enough weird stuff happening around the edge that I was like, oh yeah, that is for sure gonna make it in. Here we have mummy, spider webs, French horn, honey, honey again, and gold. Now these two honeys were different enough and cool enough that I was like, they have got to go in. Look at how rad that is. It's like a glass jar that just dissolves into rot and beehivey stuff. And this dripping on the top, mm, so cool. I had this master list of keywords that I was plugging in as I went along and I would do one like mummy and that would make me think of like ash, dust, spider webs. So I'd write all three of those down. And when I get around to spider web, I'd be like, oh my gosh, maybe honey, you know, that hexagon reminded me of the hexagon honeycomb pattern. So my list kept growing and growing and growing. And there was a point where I'm like, I'm never getting through the list. I'm just going to forever think of new keywords. But finally, the project kind of came to its natural conclusion, like they always do. And I think I ended up with a pretty cool set because of it. Here we have another gold. This one was Yellow Fountain, I believe. Radioactive. Um, terrarium. Radioactive again. You can see the very abstracted radioactive symbol at the bottom. And Bonsai Tree. Now the thing I love about AI is you all could use Mid Journey, the thing that I used, and put in the exact same prompts. You will never get the same thing. It is like impossible to get the same exact result twice. And y'all would probably come up with way different prompts than I have and plug them in and get completely different results. And I think that is so cool. Even though I didn't put in a lot of, you know, quote unquote work to make these, they're completely unique and original. And there's certainly some validity to that. Here we've got jungle, jungle again, because those are both so cool. Trees, I think. Another... A terrarium, fluorescent lighting, and Aurora Borealis. Now, to anybody using AI and making decks, I'm not throwing shade necessarily, I don't mean to. Um, more I'm just kind of trying to parse out in my own head as more decks come out. Do I think that they're adding to the tarot kind of uh, zeitgeist or kind of the whole collective thought, wow, there, there was an example of a non-collective thought. And quite frankly, I think that there are so many decks out there right now that 
it's just diluting the waters at this point. Rare are the decks that feel like they are full of love and passion and lots of thought put behind them. And tarot is just so cool and important to me that I really crave decks that are additive and not just, you know, they, they go deep and not just horizontal. I don't want another reskin of a deck. I don't want something that is just a theme. I really want something that's going to push and pull in new directions. But that's just me. And that is not for everybody. And it's also not related to what we're looking at here because we're talking about Cabinets of Curiosity, not tarot decks. I'm going to stop yammering about AI-generated art now. I probably won't. I'm sure it'll come up. This is Ocean. I have no idea what this one was. I wish I remembered because it's pretty cool. Another Butterfly. Ice or Crystal maybe. Galaxies or Novas or something. And Crystals. Now, I printed out a couple hundred, no, maybe like 150, and even from there kind of whittled it down. I wanted to see some in person. So there was a bunch of variations of this one that I printed out, and I wanted to see what stuck around. We'll see two of them in here. There was a third one that didn't make it. And there were some like this that I liked originally and then took out, and then I put them back in, and then took them out and put them back in. And I still have my extras. And I'll probably keep them around for a little while. Let them settle for a bit. And if I'm flipping through and I really dislike one of these, maybe there's one in the extras that kind of slip through the cracks and I can pop it back into the set. We've got water. Ice again. Shark. I really like that one. There's a couple sharks in here. Cave. Another sort of like digital glitch one and another x-ray a few of these glitchy ones made it in originally i thought they were kind of too samey but as i looked at them more and more i was like these are too cool i've, I've got to plug them in they're just too much fun same thing with the sharks there's i think two sharks and both of them made it in even though that's the uh source material wears itself a little bit close to the the sleeve as nobody says but they're just so much fun. And again, the whole point of this was just to be evocative and inspiring. So if one of these inspired me, that is like number one criteria. Here we have fog, icicles, icicles again. These ones, even though they're pretty similar, I just like them both enough that I'm like, screw it, they're going in. Another one of those crystal ones. Blue Vials, I don't exactly remember. And Lightning. Here we've got Under the Sea or something akin to that. Weapon Rack. Fairy Lights, really love that one. This one looks very normal on first blush, but then you get in there and there's a bunch of these weird combined lights or things that are hanging from nowhere or don't quite make sense that feels very captive curiosity to me blue i think it was just blue for that prompt lavender and also lavender but a very different um, generation for that here we have um amethyst Purple, I don't remember what the prompt was there. Maybe purple vial or something. Another amethyst. This one I put in pink liquid plastic, and it really delivered on that. Pink lines and pink tunnel, which feels very specific. And I put it in, I was like, whoa, I didn't even consider that, but it, I think it's very cool and interesting, and I love how deep it goes. When I first made my cabinets and got them all printed, I was really lacking in orange, purple, pink, and dark blue. So I really focused on those for kind of a second round. And I think I, I bumped them up and I got enough in there to provide some variety. Glitch. This was a Polaroid light leak. I really like that one. It almost looks like tarot card setup. Slime. Another glitch. You can see they're they're similar, but they're also very different. Um, another lasers and smoke, I think. And paint, I believe, was the 
the kicker for this one. We've now wrapped through all the colors and we're gonna get to the ones that I don't exactly know where to put them in color order, but they're still very cool. Light bulbs, really big fan of that one. Orchids, I love this slowly decaying little collection. Lightning. There's our other shark. Oh, it's so cool. It's got mouths everywhere. It's made of wood. I, I just love it. Rainbow. I'm a sucker for a rainbow and that does that completely delivers. Test tubes. Uh, my favorite one of them is this. It looks like carved ivory almost. It's beautiful. Wet specimens. If you're not familiar with those, those are in real cabinets of curiosity. It's like a preserved octopus or eyeball or something. This, of course, was pulling from all sorts of those, so you get just strange alien conglomerations. Stone. Bones. Chrome. White. And X-ray. I so hope you enjoyed coming into my little cabinet of curiosities with me and checking out what this AI art craze is all about. Um, I think that there's a lot more to artificially generated artwork than I give credit to. And honestly, it's brand new. Like it is on the cutting edge of what art is. It's still very young in what it can do. And I think it's not going anywhere either. I think it's gonna be a prominent feature moving forward of how artists work, maybe even myself included. And I think that it has a lot to offer. But for now, I think it's a neat novelty, very inspiring and fun to play with. And I look forward to continuing on along the, the wayward trend towards new art experiences. If I make more AI art, I'll be sure to pass it along and kind of show you what I make. If you enjoyed the cabinets, I'd love to hear what some of your favorite favorites were, or maybe what some of your keywords would be that you would plug in. Um, if I come up with some cool cabinets from keywords, I may not get them printed, but I'll at least make a video showing them off. We can throw them up on the screen and see kind of how the process works. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me, and I really hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.